And one of the things that I really, um, this past year when, when Big Mo passed, um, mm. we did our research, you know, I mean, as, as, as a hip-hop journalist, and you were probably the biggest artist in terms of commercial sales that ever really worked with him and, and mm -hmm. certainly did that at a time after his single and all that. Talk to me, um, because I don't think he's somebody that the history books are covering, and I hope that they do one day, mm -hmm. but you had a relationship there. Talk to me a little bit about who he was to you, either on the come up or working with him on that first album, and, and why you extended to him to make that record. Wow. Uh, Big Mo, legend. Houston, Texas. I mean, even Wayne, he has records now where he I say a whole Big Mo line. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you heard it, but he had rapped the whole Big Mo Bar Baby line. And he's showing respect to, you know, to Big Mo. But before I even started doing the music in screw or rapping in general, Big Mo already had radio locked down with Rick Shot Records at the time and you know, Big Mo was doing the man, and uh, he was he was he. Big Mo could sing, and even though he was big, people didn't care about that. They loved his voice. They fell in love with his heart. And Big Mo used to sing and freestyle, and people was just addicted to Big Mo. You know, and Big Mo had passed away before his career could really go to the next level, like a Fat Pat or DJ Screw and many others that you know that came. But I always. I'm a fan of music, rather it's Houston music, out of state music, I'm a fan. And I love Big Mo, you know, music, the movie, uh, The American Dream. I got d Rex from Rec Shop to shoot the movie. You know, I was a fan of the way he independently put Rec Shop records on the map. And I wanted to put Ice Age on the map independently in the same structure. So me being a fan of that, I got him to do the movie and I was getting Big Mo on my first album, Flossing. And I wrote the hook, and I was like, man, I can't sing, you know what I'm saying? But I can write, you know what I'm saying? So I wrote it, and Big Mo was like, all right, it's cool, you ain't tripping. And he sung it, and it sounded perfect. You know what I'm saying? And it hurt me that much that when that record came out, it was the number one most added record at Urban Mainstream. But the machines at the major labels started turning off and then the records start going down. So we never got a chance to see it explode as if a tipping or back then. But numbers show that it was the number one most added record before the turmoil came. And when Big Mo passed away, you know, I reached out to his mom and we did this big, big, uh, uh, Big Mo party. And we donated the proceeds to his mom, you know what I'm saying? And we just tried to just do something to just show people that it wasn't just all about Oh, we did a song with him. We wanted to reach out to the fam, too. You know what I'm saying? Two more questions, really. And one being, you know, I know you, you've talked about it in this interview. You know, put your phone number out there, saying your name. Those were revolutionary ideas. You said marketing guru. And I know that plenty of writers have, you know, given you that label. I want to ask, you know, nowadays we're in the tr Twitter era. You know, everybody's right. kind of saying what they're doing right now. A lot of fans can be like, yo, so-and-so, I don't like the record. I do like the record. I want to ask you, you know, as you see pretty much every artist in hip hop take it there, do you feel that you were a pioneer in granting fans that kind of access to who you were as a platinum artist? Oh, for sure. I mean, especially to the point that I had to take the backlash, you know what I'm saying? When I was the first one doing it at the time, I mean, everybody didn't have a problem making fun of it. Now it's an essential tool for everybody to use to help market themselves, something that I've been new to do years back. So yeah, I feel that, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of them should thank me, you feel me? But I'm not even tripping on it like that. My whole thing is if you come with a concept and I personally don't feel that it's gonna work, then I just keep my feelings and my thoughts to myself and we keep it moving. But when you publicly let it be known, oh, he's stupid, he's a gimmick, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. And then three years later, you're doing everything that you said I was doing. So I have to ask, okay, am I still what you were saying? Or was you just not hip to the game, the formula that I was doing? And I can see right now that they're doing it just fine. You know what I'm saying? So that let me know that, and I hopefully that let my fans know that if a lot of people don't agree or understand with what Mike Jones is doing, give them a couple of years that they'll start doing it. You know what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. Last thing, just, you know, talk to me. Um, you know, you were talking about the Tenderoni record. There's a lot of important collaborations and a lot of exciting things. And I know, you know, this this project, um, Voice, you know, it it's years in the making. Um, mm -hmm. The last thing I wanted to leave, just in anticipation for April 14th, kind mm -hmm. of just talk to us a little bit about what A is going to be there, but be the labor of love that went into it. Mm. Okay. Uh, for one... I want. I've been wanting to drop this album since the, the success of the first one. You know how when you just place a bet and you go from no money to winning a million, you like, oh, okay, hey, okay, I'm gonna run that same route again. You know, I never got a chance to run that route to at least be able to say I failed or I succeeded. Somebody ties on a car stopped me from getting to know my outcome. I hope you can understand what I'm saying. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the first album, I always use the scenario. The first album was Who Is Mike Jones? Someone gave me something to sell. I sold it. Two million sales. You know what I'm saying? In my time frame, where I'm from, it ain't been done. You feel what I'm saying? Double platinum out the gate. You feel what I'm saying? Never been done. So I'm like, okay, I got my second album. I know I got to do better than my first one. I got to come with it now. So I made Cuddy Buddy next to you. Drop and give me 50. So my question to you is, if I would have came out with those records right after the success of the first album, it would be a different conversation to what we're talking about right now. But since the tires went on flat and the alternator went out and you feel me? And all that happened, I was forced to still hold everything in my backpack. You feel what I'm saying? Until I felt that stuff got more smoother for me to release it. And now that it's smoother and politics are in my favor, and now that I lost weight, went from 290 to, I mean, from 285 to 190, and now the girls are saying, wow. And now that all this is happening, and now that the records that people said I couldn't do, here you go. Cut it, cut it, buddy, for sure. I'm like, dang, boy, I remember when everybody said that Mike Jones fell off with this record. I just imagine if I would have had the opportunity to drop it in 06, right after my big year, what you think would happen? I know what it did for me in 08. Just imagine what it did for me in 06. So that's why I'm so excited to bring the voice out April 14th, because the fans are finally finna get a chance to hear music that was really supposed to have been out in 06, 09. And I put a whole bunch of more records. Those just are records of example that if I would have came out with those records, those records are the same. Ain't nothing changed on them. And nobody gonna say, oh, in 06 he had this, and now he got, no, it's the same exact record. That your outfit you have on right now, someone can say, oh, no, that's not hot. You put it on a year later, same outfit. Oh, that's hot. Man, I had this on last year when you told me it wasn't hot. <laughs> What's the difference? Oh, no, you didn't have it. No, stop. You feel me? So that's what I've been going through. But I'm happy now that you're here. I'm happy that the people are here to finally hear the voice. You know what I'm saying? April 14th. And people going to finally hear the records that they, oh, Mike Jones got Cuddy Buddy. Where he get that from? I've been had it. Next to you, where he get that from? I've been had it. I done did this before. I've been had it. Tenderoni, I've been had it. Now imagine what I've been making. You feel what I'm saying? And that's why I call the album Expect the Unexpected. Because I'm not going to go another three years of politics anymore. Now that I come out April 14 with the voice, I'm bam, bam, bam. And they didn't just made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? 